So before I start coding, let's take a look how Node works. If you take a look at the Node's description on its website, it says in here it is a Node uses an event-driven non-blocking I.O. model. Let's take a look at what that means. I'm going to open my terminal and here I'm going to navigate to my desktop and create a folder. I'm going to call it Sandbox. I'm going to open the Sandbox in my coding editor. Now here I'm going to create a file called synchronous.js and to better understand we need to learn about uh, synchronous code and asynchronous. So here I'm going to first create uh, some synchronous code. Basically I'm just going to console log some stuff. Here instead of just console log this I'm going to read from my disk some stuff which is going to block the, the flow. This is going to be executed, the first, then the second, then the third. Let's do something that is going to take a while to process, which is a read director sync from the FS module. The FS module, it's one of the modules that's come built in in Node. We're going to learn more about that after. So here I'm, I'm reading from my disk, my home folder. I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to run this code with the command node synchronous. And now as you can see, it uh, before reading, reading from the disk and after reading, it executes the first, the second and the, the third in order. But the thing is, uh, you don't want your application to stop every time that there is an API request or something that is going to like processing an image on the background. So the way that node works, it creates a callback for every event. When that callback is uh, done processing, it will return to the queue. So let's uh, redo this code now in a asynchronous manner. I'm just going to create a new file called asynchronous. Asynchronous. Here I'm just going to copy the same as we have in here. But here instead of this console log, let's create a callback to represent a node's workflow. So fs, this time I'm going to use a read directory. I'm on a, Un a Linux, so that's the way my uh, home folder looks like. If you are on Windows, you would use uh, this C or whatever. Uh, folder you want to display. So uh, callback takes a, an error first and then a, whatever data you're dealing with. I'm going to console log the data back to us. So I'm going to put some message over here. So now if I run this code again, with node async, as you can see, before reading, after reading, and then reading from home folder. So this uh, event was executed. When it came to this one, it created this callback and then went down on the, for the next event. And after this callback was processed, it returned to the queue and was displayed. So it's an event driven. For every event, it creates a callback, which is going to allow it not to block the work, the flow. So let's take a look at another things. Uh, we use this FS library. And this is one of many of the libraries available to us. If you go on docs and then on the API, here on this sidebar, you can see a bunch of other modules that you can use. You're going to use the HTTP. You also use the URL. Let's take a look at this URL and uh, also the HTTP. So I'm going to close this ones. And here I'm going to create a new file called URL.js. And this basically what it does. It allows us to read from a, from a URL. So here require URL. I'm going to create a variable 
And uh, here we're going to use a method that comes um, with the URL module. And I'm just going to feed it a URL. Whenever you get like a, a interrogation mark, whatever is after, it means it's a query. Here we have a the main domain protocol that was used, like either HTTP or HTTPS or FTP or SMB, whatever. So now I'm gonna console log some stuff. So parse the URL. Dot protocol, for example. Let's do all of them. What I mentioned. So protocol is a host. Let's say query. Now, if I uh, run this code, node URL, here we have it. It allows you to break down the URL and pick the information you like, you want. So these methods that we used over here to grab this information, you can get them all from the URL uh, module in here. here. If you scroll down, you get the URL. And here you have the host name, the host we used, at the protocol. So let's take a look now in the HTTP, which is gonna be awesome. We use it to create a web server. So basically, I think that's one of the most important ones from the ones you're going to be using. Server.js. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna create a HTTP variable and require it. And uh, Basically how it works, you create a server with the HTTP create server. Uh, this comes with the HTTP. Here we create a function that's gonna receive a request and a response. So users ask for something, the server will take this request, do something and respond. And then we need to tell it to listen and give it a port to open up a connection in our browser. So this is the basic structure for a node server. So let's console log something. Now do the request. The request comes with a lot of information that a node makes available to us. So if you run this code, so node server, Nothing happens because we did not send any feedback. We just console logging the request. So if you go to your web browser and go to localhost colon 880, when you press enter, you see that uh, nothing happens, but your browser is uh, hanging. If you go back to your terminal, you're gonna see a big object over here. And uh, when you go up, you see incoming message. And this object is full of information that is you can use in our application. Let's request something so we can filter out that information. We're gonna do the URL, which saw before as well. And uh, for that, I need to restart the server. And when I go back to my browser overload, here I'm getting the node server slash. And that's because I'm on the, I'm on the root, that means it's the root, but if I go to users and I press enter, see I got the users over here. So this is just one of the many information we can get out of the request, which is important. Let's take a look at the response. Again, I will restart the server. Now I need to remove that and oh, it's not response, it's console log. Sorry about that. Now if I reload, I get that big object again. But this is a server response. Right now we're just uh, console logging this, but let's see how can we send back some information. You do response dot end. The ending here is going to terminate the, the event with the response. So here you can add anything, a resource, or you can even put a string. In the typical hello world. 
Now, if you run this and you go to the page and refresh, you see hello world. So uh, whenever you use the response.end, this will terminate the event and whatever you add under will not run. So if you close and restart, there we go. You got the hello world, but you don't get the other one. If you move this one up and then I'll reload the server again. Well, I didn't save it. There we go. So this will terminate the connection with the response. Now let's take a look how can you build something a bit more meaningful than this. I'm gonna create a if block and here I'm gonna take the request.url and if the request is equal to the root, I'm gonna do something. If not, if the request uh, is uh, URL is equal to, let's say, about, I'll do something else. So here, let's do a response dot end because we're gonna match that URL is gonna send this response. Uh, we're gonna use, let's say, a homepage. Here I will say about page. And now let's create one that is going to cut everything. If the page is not found, we will send a not found back. So let's try it out on the server. Now I go to the browser and if I run, I get the home page. Here we have a about. And uh, any route that I go that w doesn't exist, you'll be a not found. So this is a little basic uh, routing with Node web server. Now we're going to take a look at Express. But before I go, I'll, uh, let's talk about uh, the require here. So uh, the CommonJS, this require was is part of the CommonJS, which was created uh, when Node didn't have a way to organize files. Like uh, on the web, they have the script tags, which you can just use it to link uh, your current file to another JavaScript file. But the thing is, it was created because Node didn't have a way to do these things. But the problem is that it's it's not part of the ECMAScript that's 39, the TC39, which is the group that controls uh, JavaScript, like they do the features we are using today and tomorrow. But they have a proposal going on, which is the pr proposal of dynamic imports. You can take a look if you like on the repository. The repo is the TC39 and you can find it in there. Uh, basically, it's gonna uh, use the, you can use uh, imports like that instead of using the require, which eventually the require and the CommonJS is gonna become obsolete. And it's also because it's stuck on time. So for this course, we're going to use the ESM. The ESM module, the proposal, as you can see here, is currently on stage three, which is not supported in Node yet, but we have this um, library called ESM. It was made by the guy who created Lodash. Let's take a look how can we build applications using the ECMAScript module. As you can see over here, all the features he has, he has the import export, which is, is what you're going to be using a lot. It has dynamic life binding, loading and other stuff. So, Let's get going and learn about Express next.